America, you're watching America Trends, where we cover the hot topics of the day. I'm Barry Nussbaum, keeping this couch warm for the one, the only, Dr. Gina. Our poll question today, do you believe the Democratic leadership rigged the primaries for Hillary? Yes or no? Don't forget, you can follow us online, you can vote online, you can follow me at uh, findberry.com. Okay. Joining us now from Philadelphia at the DNC convention is the political reporter for Politichicks, back to join us from a different convention, Mona Salama. Hello, hey. hello, hello. Hi. Hi. All right, lots going on. I watched it all day. Tell me, what's the morale at the DNC since Debbie Wasserman Schultz got boiled alive with... Uh, Thousands of emails painting a really ugly picture of the leadership. It, there's still a lot of anger and frustration going on right now. You can see it. There's a massive amount of protest. You know, everybody assumed that this protest was going to happen, the Republican National Convention. And the Republican National Convention was like a safe haven zone. And here we're like in a zoo right now. It's so chaotic. Yeah, tell me about that, Mona. I was watching on TV. I swear it looked like the entire street. I said this to Gina a minute ago, Mona, like thousands of people were chanting, hell no, DNC, we won't vote for Hillary. And it wasn't a few, it was a lot of people. Yeah, you also heard repetitive chants that we heard in the DNC, lock her up, you know, um, Hill's got to go, lock her up. There was a lot of chants. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And they're, wait a minute. They're, they're chanting that inside the hall in Philly? Yeah, they were chanting that earlier before the speaker started. They were chanting, lock her up. Um, earlier, there was like a uh, security guard taking away their, their signs because they were trying to calm them down. And um, the only way to calm them down was to take their signs away. So there was a security guard going around. There's like a video around, going around the floors and taking away people's Bernie Sanders signs. Holy moly. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm flabbergasted because these are delegates with credentials, right? inside mm -hmm. the convention hall that feel, and not unjustly, Mona, that they were disenfranchised, that their guy uh, was fighting the inside fix. It, it, it's, it's obvious from what I'm reading today that he never had a chance. He never had a chance with the superdelegates. He never had a chance, even if it was against, like, let's say if he was running against, like, Andrew Cuomo, that he was flirting a run, or if he was um, Elizabeth Warren, Anyone for that matter, if it was not Hillary, he still never had a chance. The system was always against him. He was just the political um, outsider. He really caused a lot of ruckus. Um, they thought that he was just going to be like a little cockroach that was just going to come and annoy you. And they could not, like, get rid of him. And they tried their best. They tried, you know, coalescing with the endorsement. That didn't work. And today he spoke with his delegates. And even his delegates were, like, furious. And when he said, like, we need to... Um, work together with Hillary and Sam Cain, they are so furious. And what's even getting them on top, on edge, is her VP pick because they see someone like Tim Cain, they're like, you know, he's like a hundred times more conservative than Hillary is. So they're more frustrated about that VP pick. They wanted someone like Elizabeth Warner. They wanted someone at least like, you know, Bernie Sanders for that matter. Um, and she picked some, a white guy. And like, you know, she thought, everybody thought she would probably pick someone of a minority like Cory Booker or like um, Julia Castro, she went totally opposite of what they all assumed and they're so frustrated. And then the emails to top that off, it's just like top of the top, it's like layers of cakes and there's just, they're frustrated and they don't know what they're to do. So the best thing they can do is cause ruckus and uh, headache in the convention hall. Well, that, and not th only in the convention hall, outside in the, um, what you call it, in the streets as well. Yeah, let's talk about that. So you've got a, a very sizable, several thousand people there that feel like, justifiably so, that they, the system screwed them. So the DNC executives were hitting the talk shows this afternoon while the convention was going on, Mona, to say, uh, don't worry, 90 plus percent of the Bernie voters in the country are going to switch over to Hillary. Don't worry, they're all going to fall in line. What's your prediction about that? Do you think that's true or is that wishful thinking right now? I think it's just them being wishful thinking because if they go outside in the streets and they see those protesters, 
and they see like yo younger kids, like younger than my age. You see a lot of minorities. You see a lot of like um, union groups that endorse Bernie. They're not happy with the system. So I don't know who they're calling. Are they calling like the old average Democrat voters, or are they calling someone that are um, Bernie supporters that are like old, old age, that are hardcore Democrat voters? I don't know who they're calling because it's not looking like that in the streets. You know, you talk about like these like never Trump's not going to support Cruz. It looks like those people are more likely to support uh, Trump than Bernie supporters are look like to support Hillary. And it looks like the recent polls that came out after even the, after the endorsement, her, Bernie supporters, there was like 47 percent and it dropped down 13 and went down to 34 percent. Only 34 percent of Bernie supporters are looking to endorse Hillary or support Hillary come November. And now with the VP pick, we got to see those new polls. Is it Did it go up? Did it stay the same? Or it went down? Because it looks like it went down. All right, well, here's the billion-dollar question, all right? Those voters, and there's millions and millions and millions of them from coast to coast, only have three choices, right? Vote for Hillary. Stay home. Vote for Trump. What do you think they're going to do, Mona? You Trump's, a, Trump's an outsider. But he's on the, the other one. end. The fourth one is the Green candidate. The Green candidate right. is joining on with the party, with the movement. And a lot of them are looking towards her because she's like the alternative to Bernie. And she can capulate with getting enough percentage to hit the, to get into the, the uh, general election primary, I mean, debates between Hillary, Bernie, I mean, Hillary Trump and Gary Johnson. And let, let's say they might even go for Gary Johnson or if that um, Green Party candidate Jill can hit the 15 percent trust mark to hit the to get into the um, debates, her name could get out there and that can pour less to a four way party system. Well, if that were to happen, those are Democrats leaving the Democratic Party. That would be very, very good news for the GOP and Donald Trump. Mona, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for being with us. I know you're going to be on later in the week. We look forward to hearing with you. Definitely. Coming up on America Trends, we want to hear poll results. Please go vote. We're dying to hear what you have to say. It's a really important question tonight, America. We want to know what you have to say. And go to our Twitter page, check out our videos, and give us suggestions. In the meantime, you can find me at findberry.com. Back in a minute. Yeah, I've been